Lift off in three, two, one. And here is Neptune, a gas giant discovered in the mid 19th century. It is the eighth and the farthest planet from the Sun. The most unique features of Neptune are its great dark spots. These are actually huge storm systems that form and disperse over time. Due to the great distance from the Sun, the outer atmosphere of Neptune is one of the coldest places in the solar system. Flying closer towards the Sun, we start to approach Uranus. Just like Neptune, it is also an ice giant. Its planetary rings are chains of debris, which were formed by collisions with the moons, which once orbited it. Today we know that Uranus has 27 natural satellites. Unlike the other planets in our solar system, Uranus spins on its side. Saturn, the planet that has always impressed and fascinated people. It is often claimed to be the most beautiful. This gigantic gaseous sphere, however charming it may seem, is not though a friendly place to visit because of its high internal pressure and temperature. Unlike Earth or Mars, it doesn't have a rocky surface. Its impressive rings composed of ice particles, rocky debris and cosmic dust are simply hypnotizing. Despite the huge surface, the rings are in fact only several hundred meters thick. They are probably the remains of one of the planet's moons, which would have been torn apart by gravity. Saturn has a staggering number of known moons, 56 in total. Now let's take a closer look at one of them. Enceladus, named after one of the giants of Greek mythology, Enceladus. The whole surface of this natural satellite of Saturn is covered by 30 kilometer thick ice. Underneath the ice there is an ocean. According to scientists it may be home to some primordial forms of life. On Enceladus we can see there are ice volcanoes. They spew chiral lava with steam, gases, ice crystals and organic particles. We can now witness one of the eruptions. The last of the gas giants, Jupiter, is the largest planet in the solar system. In its huge volume, it could house 1400 planets the size of Earth. Just like Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, Jupiter does not have a rocky surface. What we see is a cloud layer in its atmosphere. The most prominent feature of Jupiter is the Great Red Spot, a persistent anticyclonic storm with a diameter larger than that of Earth which has been raging there for at least 350 years, exceeding 600 kilometers per hour. The next stop on our journey is Mars, also known as the Red Planet. It owes its moniker to a rustic color, the result of iron oxide prevalent on its surface. Below we can see one of Mars' canyons. We are heading there now. The place where we are right now is called Valles Marineris. It is the largest of the canyons discovered so far. It is 5,000 kilometers long, which is 11 times longer than the Grand Canyon in the USA. In 2003, the American Space Agency NASA sent two rovers, Spirit and Opportunity on a mission of exploration. After a couple of months, both landed safely on the surface of Mars. Meet Spirit. Right now it is drilling to collect and measure the samples of Martian rock. Mars has long attracted interest among scientists. Its surface conditions and the presence of water make it the most human-friendly planet in the solar system after Earth. 
For many years, engineers have been planning to send a manned mission to Mars, and in future, to colonize it. Unfortunately, there are many dangers that the future colonizers will have to face. One of them are marching dust storms that can completely cover the planet's surface for many months. At this point in our journey, we are traveling closest to our home, Earth. This unique planet, inhabited by millions of plants and animal species, is the only known place in space where life has evolved. In the second half of the 20th century, two Americans, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, were the first to set foot upon the moon. This is the lunar lander that brought one of the six manned Apollo missions to the moon. The most beautiful view admired by people from the moon's surface was of our blue planet. Looking at the sky, we can easily observe Earth partially shrouded in darkness. The small dots we can see are the lights of the cities. We're now getting closer to the center of the solar system. We're heading towards Venus, a rocky planet that has a similar mass and size as Earth. Scientists assume that there might once have been oceans on its surface that later evaporated due to an increase in temperature, which today reaches around 500 degrees Celsius. Although Venus is farther from the Sun than Mercury, it is the hottest planet in the solar system. To look at the sun so closely, we will use a filter, which passes through just a fraction of a percent of all the light admitted by this star. The first planet from the sun, and the last one we are visiting is Mercury. It is the smallest and least explored planet due to its close proximity to our star. Numerous impact craters and virtually no atmosphere make Mercury very similar to our moon. Just like Venus though, it doesn't have a natural sunlight. And here is the Sun, the central star of our solar system. Its light and heat make life on Earth possible. From a distance it seems to be a yellow homogeneous sphere, but seen up close it looks completely different. On the Sun's surface there is a turbulent ocean of gas, reaching temperatures of 5500 degrees Celsius. In its center, the temperature reaches 14 million degrees Celsius. This is where our journey comes to an end. We have covered a total distance of four and a half billion kilometers. We have seen enormous gas giants and smaller rocket planets. And yet still we know very little about space. Every day though, scientists make new surprising discoveries of places that are waiting to be explored. What today seems to be only a distant planet, in the future may become our new home.